Okay, before I get started, I would just like to say that I've never seen any of the Disney live-action remakes, and I never intend to. I think they're unimaginative, offensive, disrespectful, shameless, dark, soulless, and a mockery of actual great movies, and only exist to fix petty non-existent complaints and make a company millions of guaranteed dollars. Alright, so as you can guess, I'm not a huge fan of them. So if you're still here, which I do very much appreciate if you are, Today I'd like to go over a change I hope they don't make to the live-action Little Mermaid remake. I mean, I guess it really doesn't matter too much since I'm not going to watch it either way, but in this case it's more the principle of the thing, you know? And needless to say, there will be spoilers ahead for the Disney version of The Little Mermaid, so you know what you should probably do if you don't want anything ruined. So to get right into it, I've often heard that Disney live-action remakes tend to be mostly the same, but do change some stuff that was quote-unquote a problem with the original, or that the creative team behind it wanted to modernize the story a bit. And as far as The Little Mermaid goes, I have no doubt there'd be people out there who'd want to change the climax so that Ariel has a bigger role in it, if not have her just kill Ursula outright. But in my opinion, I think that's something that should stay just the way it is in the original, and the reason for that may surprise you. Okay, so the climax of The Little Mermaid is one of the most famous in Disney history. Having just acquired the all-powerful Triton, Ursula grows to humongous proportions in an attempt to kill Ariel and Eric, and nearly succeeds until Eric runs her through with the front of a previously sunken boat. Now, the reason I wouldn't want this changed doesn't have to do with the spectacle, or the fact that it's kind of epic, which it admittedly still is, but for something even more important thematic reasons. You see, what causes the whole story in the first place isn't so much Ariel's interest in humans, but King Triton's hatred of them. I mean, think about it. If he was supportive of the whole thing from the start, the plot would be a lot simpler, wouldn't it? Especially because Ursula wouldn't be able to use Ariel against him in that case. But in the story as is, Triton sees humans as nothing but cold, ruthless, heartless, animalistic barbarians. He only sees the worst in them, while Ariel sees the best, which obviously causes friction between them. And the problem really comes in when Triton lets his seething hatred of them cloud his judgment to the point that he hurts his daughter in ways he never would have under any other circumstances. That's how much he hates them, and that's the lengths his xenophobia will drive him to. And even though he seems to thoroughly regret his actions, that's only because of what it does to his daughter. For him, it still isn't a question of who's right, just a matter of him going too far, trying to teach her a lesson. He only regrets how he went about it, not the fundamental nature of their argument. But it gets even worse when his behavior drives Ariel to his worst enemy and causes her to make a deal that effectively seals both their fates. And that's another thing. People complain that Ariel sold her voice for a pair of legs, but you do understand that Ursula deliberately picked a moment where she wasn't thinking clearly, right? I mean, when help arrives at your lowest point, when there seemingly is no other solution and is offering to give you everything you ever wanted, you're going to be much more likely to listen and be willing to give up a lot more than under normal circumstances. And it's like I said, Ursula specifically waited for that opportunity. I mean, when Ariel signs that contract, she clearly isn't in the right headspace to make such a deal. And part of the reason she's doing it might even be to spite her father for what he'd just done. And that's exactly the mentality Ursula wanted her to have. I mean, forgive the bad analogy, 
But if your father just destroyed the stamp collection you'd been collecting for years and immediately after somebody comes along offering you a photo album full of the rarest stamps in the world for some ludicrous deed or price, wouldn't you be much more likely to take the offer than you would normally? Again, I know that's a bad analogy, but I just feel that's the best way to describe her situation at that moment. Like I said, you can say it was dumb all you want, but Ursula was clearly waiting until she was vulnerable, desperate, and wanting some kind of revenge on her father. Actually, in all honesty, for an hour and 15 minute animated musical, this movie has an excellent dynamic between father and daughter that's able to carry the whole story with ease. It's really quite impressive. But to get back on topic, and sorry for that little side rant there, in the end, the plan works exactly as Ursula intended it to, and gets Triton to sign away his life in exchange for Ariel's. And the saddest part might just be that honestly, he has nobody to blame but himself at that moment. Not even a human, and he might very well know it. He had driven Ariel to that point, and his taking the deal might even be partially from lingering guilt over what he had done earlier. In one instant, he's lost pretty much everything and left the ocean at the mercy of an insane megalomaniac, and it's all his own fault. And that's where the brilliance of this movie's climax comes in. Think about it. Ursula's one, and she's about to kill Ariel at the moment she gets it out of nowhere. And who delivers it? Prince Eric. A human, which Triton despises above almost everything else, killed Ursula. In that instant, Eric saved his kingdom, his daughter, and even Triton's own life. A human saved everything he ever cared about, and is the only reason that either he or Ariel is alive afterwards. Suddenly, he owes everything he holds dear to a human he had previously hated for just being a human. Basically, the moment Eric kills Ursula, he proves Triton absolutely wrong about everything he ever thought he knew about humans. And that's what leads to him finally allowing Ariel to become a human as well. Because Eric proved Ariel was right, and in the process saved everything he cared about from an absolutely horrible fate. Because of Eric's actions, Triton is finally able to let go of his xenophobia and finally see things through a clear lens, giving him the chance to set things right once and for all. Honestly, when you really think about it, Triton is a great cautionary tale about the evils of xenophobia and racism. And that's not bad for a supposedly right light-hearted musical. But my point with all of this is, Eric saving Ariel at the end is far from just a prince saving a damsel in distress, especially since Ariel had already saved him earlier in the movie. It holds major thematic significance and allows Triton to finally see the error of his ways through his actions. And as I said at the start, I really hope they don't change that for the live-action remake. As I said, the story is honestly a great one when you really look at it, but in order for it to work right, Eric has to be the one to kill Ursula without any help. Because not only is it an epic moment, but it proves to Triton, who essentially caused the entire conflict, that he was wrong. And when he accepts that, allows the story to come full circle and lead to a peaceful resolution. So to change that aspect of it would really diminish what comes after, and Triton's decision to turn Ariel back into a human in particular. But of course, all of this is irrelevant if they decide to change other aspects of the story, which I have no doubt they will. I have no doubt the underwater scenes will be really dark, most of the fun will be removed, and the runtime will be bloated to stretch it to two hours, causing them to add a bunch of stuff they don't need while probably also cutting out important stuff. Now obviously I hope that they don't do that, but let's face it, that's what they've done with everything else. 
So I guess how important the changing of the climax is really depends on how much they change other aspects of the story, and if by some miracle the rest of it remains more or less intact, then I hope they keep the climax as is. Now I know that soon enough this video won't even be relevant anymore. In due time the movie will be released and whatever changes they'll make, they'll make. And I highly doubt this video will change anything. But in the end, all I really wanted was for people to understand the climax of this movie and why it's a great one even beyond the sheer epicness of it. So all I can really say is, I still hope that no matter when you're watching this, you'll still take something away from this video. Alright, that's all I have to say on that. So what do you think? Do you think the climax of The Little Mermaid is perfect and should remain as is? Or do you hope they do something different in the remake? Please let me know in the comments. And look, if you think I'm wrong about everything, that's fine. And I also mean no disrespect to all the people who work on these remakes. I understand how much hard work they put into them. It's more the people who allow these movies to be made in the first place that I'm mad at, rather than the ones who actually work on them. But thank you all for watching. I always greatly appreciate it. And I hope to see you all next time.